that cool? I'm going to show you an accessory for your table saw, actually two accessories that you cannot buy. You're going to have to make them, but once you've made them, you'll wonder how you ever did without them. This is a tall fence for your table saw. Well, not your table saw, actually one of my old table saws. It's 12 inches high, that's 30 centimeters. Most, uh, most table saw fences are only about three inches high or seven centimeters. This is also a tall fence. It starts out at six inches, that's about 15 centimeters, and goes on up to 12 inches or 30 centimeters. And it can be adjusted anywhere in between. You see these machine bolts right here? You just loosen those, put it where you want it, tighten them down, and there you go. Both of these offenses attach to your table saw fence, like I'm going to show you right now. I designed these fences so that they just clamp to your regular table saw fence. There's no holes to drill, no bolts to worry about. Easy on, easy off. When do you need a tall fence? Well, whenever you need to cut a board on edge. For example, if you would need to cut a slot in the end or the edge of a board, or turn it into a raised panel. These tall fences can be really handy about once or twice a year when you need to do those sorts of things. But they really shine, and I mean really shine, when they support a horizontal fence. Now, what is a horizontal fence? Well, I'm glad I asked. A horizontal fence is just what it sounds like. It's a fence, but it's turned so that the guiding surface is, well, horizontal. When you do this, you can no longer use the fence surface to guide the wood past the blade. Instead, you use the fence edge. First of all, you attach the horizontal fence to the tall fence. Here I am attaching it to the adjustable fence. And here it is attached to the simple fence that I showed you earlier. Incidentally, we provide the drawings for both fences, the uh, simple fence and the cool fence, in the plans that we offer at the end of this video. Set the saw blade to the desired depth of cut. And then position the fence so that it's just about an eighth of an inch or three millimeters above the blade. Finally, adjust the position of your regular fence so that the guiding edge of the horizontal fence is precisely even with the outside edge of the saw blade. To make a cut with the horizontal fence, first you mark the cut that you want to make on your stock. Now attach a guide to the stock with double-sided carpet tape. Since this tape is pressure activated, I beat the guide with a dead blow hammer to get a good bond. Align the guide with the edge of the horizontal fence, turn the saw on, and make the cut. That's all there is to it. Two things. First, the cutoff waist has to be less than three and a half inches wide. That's nine centimeters in order for it to fit underneath the fence. Second, you don't have to attach the guide with carpet tape. Use brads if you don't mind the nail holes. And even if you do mind the nail holes, you don't have to live with them. Let me show you a neat trick. Wet a paper towel and lay it over the nail hole. Put a piece of aluminum foil over that and then heat up the foil with an iron. Let up when it stops steaming. When you remove the foil and the towel, the nail hole will have almost completely disappeared. Almost. Okay, now you know the basic technique. So what is it that you can do with it? Well, I'm going to show you a few things, but if you'll use your imagination, I'm sure you'll find a whole lot more. You can use it as a jointer, taking off warped or cupped or twisted surfaces, or doing what I'm doing right here, taking off the live edge of a piece of hackberry. You can use it to make long, thin tapers. Here I am making a tapered leg. Use it to make odd angles, especially if you don't want to set up for just one cut. Just draw it out on the board and cut it. You can use it to reproduce odd shapes. Here I am cutting out a pentagon that will become the front and the back of a small birdhouse. 
You can even use it to make convex curves. Now this will take me some time, but in a little while I'm going to have a complete circle. And there you go. Obviously, not the most practical way to cut a circle, but I was just doing it to show off the capabilities of the, uh, of the fence. And you may have some questions about the safety about what I just did, but the fence does a very good job of protecting you against kickback as long as you send the stock straight through without turning it until the excess or the stock showing at the edges is smaller than the width of the saw blade. Then you can turn it. And one more thing while I'm on the subject of safety, and this is very important. You cannot let debris accumulate underneath the fence. You've got to keep a poker like I have here so that you can send it through each time you make a cut. <laughs> what do you know, a wooden frisbee. <laughs> oh, almost worth the effort. Just wanted to remind you, the uh, plans for all of these jigs are on our store. Uh, just click the button right here, or, or maybe it's over here, or just go to the description. And thanks for watching. Ready? <laughs>